welcome back to the show. We're talking all about you empty nesters out there. Did you just send your last child off to college? Now you're like, what do we do? The house is so quiet, especially after a year of COVID. And I bet you some of you had more family members in your house than you're used to. Well, here to talk with us today about it is Val Baldwin. She's a relationship coach. Val, this uh, this is something that really changes people's lives all the time. It sudden. does. It hits them in the face, doesn't it? It really does. And, and it's it can be really so sad and you might feel empty and lonely and you're wondering what am I supposed to do now you right. know if your focus has been raising these kids and and now the last one's out of the house and they've gone back to college or got married or they're old enough to live on their own and you know what am I supposed to do now that's it's a big a big question it's a big change so you've got five tips for them let's start yes. first with everybody needs to realize that they are not alone in this everybody else is experiencing it as well yes it's perfectly normal do not be ashamed about this feeling everyone goes through this all parents do some more than others especially moms that's for sure and yeah don't be ashamed and let yourself cry every once in a while that's okay it is okay. It's I like okay. it. Let it shed a few tears, and after yes. you shed a few tears, pat yourself on the back and congratulate yourself. Yes, because as a parent, your job is to raise self-sufficient, independent adults mm -hmm. who grow up and move out of the house. So you have just accomplished that. That's a very big deal. Just be glad that you don't have your kids who are in their 30s and 40s still living at home. So that is good. That's There's a, good a lot thing. of parents grateful for that. They're yes. like, hey, I did a good job. They can actually sustain <laughs> themselves, even though it's really scary. I mean, I remember when I went up to college and all of a sudden you're like, wait, what? I have how many bills? How yeah. does this work? How do I? Yes. I don't know. I can't shop like I used to. It, it's kind of scary, but you know, hopefully mom and dad did their job to help you get there. Absolutely. Okay, tip number three. It is time for a fresh start. Right, so instead of focusing on your kids and all the responsibilities, it's now time to rediscover yourself. Think about what would you have liked to have done before you got married and had children? Do you wanna go back to school or uh, learn a new language or find a new hobby, go to a new vacation or um, start a new career? That will help you understand what you might be doing right now, what you should be doing right now. So, or what you can be doing now. It's a, it, feel free to explore and rediscover yourself without any guilt. It's your turn now. And I think a lot of parents, you know, have those regrets of shoulda, woulda, coulda, I wish I'd done this before I had kids. And I, you know, they constantly go through that. So like you're saying, now is your time to actually go enjoy some of those things and not feel guilty. Like I'm not giving my children enough attention right. anymore. No, it's no guilt. I like it's it. Okay. Time for you. Tip number four, your child's needs versus your needs. Yeah, now this, this you need to be very open and honest with your children about, okay? How often do you wanna stay in contact? How often should you be making phone calls or FaceTime? Is it once a week? Is it, I mean, anything two times a week or less is, is healthy, okay? okay? But you don't wanna be too clingy and because your child doesn't wanna be into that kind of drama, okay? They, they want to know that they are, can be, you trust them, they're on their own, and they're making great big decisions on their own, and that's a, that's a wonderful thing. And you can still support them by sending care packages or, you know, some right. food or treats or whatever. It's very important, but have an open discussion as to how often should you be in contact. And it's probably different for each child because I know Absolutely. I'm not a, I don't call my mom usually daily. I love you, mama. She's probably watching, <laughs> but I have some siblings that probably talk to her multiple times a day. It just depends on the child. So depends maybe, on the child. Yeah. Figure that out. But it needs to, but you need to know what works for both of you. Exactly. Smart. Right. I like it. Okay. Last but not least, our fifth tip is create a new marriage for your new life. Yes, this is very important. And most couples don't understand that this can be a very fragile time for your marriage. In fact, the divorce rate goes up by 16% oh, yeah. during empty nester time. And that's because you haven't been spending the time and the effort nourishing your own marriage because of all the responsibilities you've had raising your children. So now's the time to sit down with your spouse and, and go over all the things that you want this new period in your life to look like. What are the things that you like and dislike now, you know, as far mm -hmm. as vacations yeah. and food and, and uh, concerts and sports and and who and go over the chores as to what maybe you should figure out a different not way a of setting up the chores. You. <laughs> right yeah who's going to be doing what got to do them and this can be a fabulous happy chapter in your marriage but you need to be conscious about it and make sure you go out once a week get out of the house go on a date and you have the freedom to be romantic whenever you want to 
There so you that's, go. <laughs> that's hey, a good thing. Yeah. All right. You're feeling frisky? Go for it. <laughs> yeah. You heard it here first from Val Baldwin. Val, if they want to talk with you, maybe they need some help coaching through this empty nest syndrome, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, go to my website at valbaldwin.com and my contact info is there. Wonderful. Good to see you, Val.